In January 2021, I posted a one minute video of me cleaning up after a game of Monasterium, and many people had issues with it. Many people were surprised, shocked, and even disgusted at the apparent lack of care that I showed for the game components, as if they were going to somehow self-destruct after I swept them into the box and put them on the shelf. Yes, I picked up the yellow meeple that I dropped. I even pointed it out, throwing it into the box on camera. People express so much care for that one yellow meeple. It's fine. It's perfectly fine sitting in the box. Nothing has happened to it since that time. I'll even demonstrate it later in this video. But before I do that, I thought I'd take a few minutes to demonstrate why I put games away this way and why I think you should do it this way too. We'll start with an example of Freedom and Frieza's Fry of Farts, a game I reviewed recently. I'll put a link up to that review. It's a fabulous game. I love it a lot. There's a lot of bits in this game, but you can put it away a lot faster than you think you can. Here's the end state of a three-player game of Fry of Fart that I've meticulously recreated from a photo that I took following the end of my ninth game. The only one that I've won to date, so apparently I was very proud of how things turned out. The cards are not exactly the same around the side, but that doesn't matter. We've got a layout of cards, we've got the components after all the train lines have been built on the board. There are an awful lot of bits on the board. There's some extra bits that are used to mark routes you can watch my overview video of the game to understand why I did that. So there's even more pieces on the board than there would be normally. You could, in theory, have everyone pick up their pieces and put them all away in a bag. And then you can hand people their bag when you get set up next time. I would argue you don't need to do that. The only thing that I'm going to care about are the cards because they have hidden information on them. You're going to have decks of cards. You don't want to see which cards are coming. You don't want things to be marked. So the cards are all that I care about in terms of ensuring that things are not damaged because they have hidden information on them. You can sort them all into piles. You can sort them by deck number to ensure that all three decks are together, but I'm not going to do that right now because I can do that at the start of the next game. There's no need to spend time sorting cards now. Uh, I do need to ensure that all the cards are in the same orientation. I'm not a monster. I don't know. Okay, that's my particular quirk. I want cards facing the same way. That's a real problem, I admit. Someday maybe I'll get over that. But once I have the cards wrapped up, I'll put those in the box. We got all the cardboard larger pieces that might cause havoc when I sweep everything else in the box. And aside from the cards, why not do this with everything else? If you are timing how long it took to clean up, you will see that that was almost no time at all. Rules done, done, done. It's finished. I used Fry of Fart as an example for two reasons. One, the game has lots of tiny components and cards, and that mix of components is important because I want to protect the cards. Everything else doesn't matter. I'm not going to damage the pieces 
by shaking them around like this. There is nothing that is going to happen to the wooden bits or to the board. It does not affect things. The cards are in bags. They will still be in bags. Everything is fine. And I know that some people argue that you save setup time by bagging everything when you finish the game so that next time you can hand out bags to each person and setup can be done more quickly. I would argue otherwise. I'll demonstrate this in a moment, but let me talk about reason number two. I was taught this method of cleanup by Friedemann Frieza himself. I've played various prototype games with Friedemann at different events uh, because I write about new game releases. So he's showing me things that are upcoming. So hopefully I'll write about them. Also, he's awesome fun to play with. Although I, I cannot be green when I play with him because clearly he is always green. Aside from that though, Friedemann demonstrated his cleanup method one time, everything in the box. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. He's like, I may never play this game again. I never come off the shelf. Why would I spend a moment cleaning up beyond what I need to, if I don't think I'll touch this game again. Okay, that really resonated with me. Why would I do that? I know in theory, if, if I don't play the game, maybe I'll sell it to someone else and they'll worry about the complete components and this, that, and the other. They can check that out when I sell the game to them because primarily I sell only in person. People can look through the box. They can examine whatever they want to determine that it's all there. But I really, took to heart his idea that you may never play the game again. I might die sometime soon. And man, it'd be terrible if I were thinking how much time I spent backing up games instead of just playing them. Because as I argue, you can get set up just fine without having to bag anything. Let me show you how to do it for this particular game. Here's the box game as I just packed it up, put the lid aside, I need the rules because I still do not remember the number of starting track for the particular player counts. In our mock four player game, each player gets 10 pieces of track. So I put out the board, facing it away from me as I always do because usually I'm teaching it to new people. So I want them to have everything upright pull out the cardboard bits and say, what color do you want to be other than green? Because I'm going to be green. That's the solo train, not used with multiple players. People are going to take their color, whatever it happens to be. All right, no one's going to be white. We'll put that aside. Take out the cards. Okay, everyone, take 10 pieces of track and they will do that while I get out the cards. If you wish, you can take all your tunnels or your arches or whatever you want to call these things. I forget what they're actually called in the rules. Typically, I think of them as arches and someone else says tunnels and I'm like, huh, oh, well, that makes sense either way. Sort the cards because I did not do it last time and I'll give some to someone else to sort as well. And this will be pretty much it. I could have had people help sort at the end of the last game if I wished, but again, why don't we move on to other things? Why don't we do this time here? As we sort, I would be telling people, all right, you can take your pieces if you want. You should have a train as well. You're going to have a hammer to show tunnels in progress. Take two coins and put them on each of the nine spaces around the board so people can do all of that while I'm explaining and sorting cards. And we're going to start with a track. And your goal in the game is to end up with the most points. You are going to collect city cards. There are 45 city cards equal to the number of cities on the board. And there are going to be multiple routes that you are claiming over the course of the game. Routes are going to come out as a row of three cards and oh, now this is off camera. You are going to either pick up in Helsinki and deliver in Budapest or pick up in Budapest and deliver in Minsk. Those are the only options available and so forth. And we'll be starting the game in just a few minutes after this because everyone already has their pieces. They already have their track. They picked out track for me. We give an example of how the game works. If you decide you're gonna start in Helsinki, you're gonna put your train in Helsinki. You are going to be delivering to Budapest. 
and that is going to go on your train here, and Minsk gets thrown away. No one cares about Minsk right now, or at least no one is going to access Minsk at the moment. I'm in Helsinki. On my turn, I can build track, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to continue the explanation, and we'll get going very fast. There's no need for sorting. People just pick out what they want. You could pick them out as you need them. You don't need to have everything stockpiled in front of you because you are not using these all at once. You're going to be using them one by one as you are putting track on the board. You don't need to sort all that. If someone is not playing a color, it'll just get left behind. Everything is fine. Everything will work out just wonderfully. Now the cards are all sorted, so when I put this away for real, the game will be set to play the next time it comes out of the box, just like this. Admittedly, I might find it easier to use a system like this because I tend to play Euro games and streamlined designs that don't have hundreds of different types of components and are games that would really benefit from some sort of organization. This system is probably not going to be useful for you for Gloomhaven, for example. But for most other games, it will work just fine. If we look at Monasterium, I have played this game since the initial boxing that I recorded. I also recorded a video of it, so it's been in and out of the box multiple times. We got all the flat components on top. We got the bag of bags that I still have not used and everything else. Hey folks, let's get set up. What color do you wanna be? Take those pieces. We're going to make a pile of this stuff, we're going to make a pile of this stuff, and so on. We're going to sort things out. The cards are scoring conditions for a particular game. They're not hidden information, so I don't bag them because it doesn't matter. There's nothing to be gained from doing so. These components are all the same. These are all the same. They're all stained glass things. It doesn't matter. So for a lot of this, you just sort it out, take your own pieces. It doesn't matter doesn't matter. And who knows? I'm still not playing the game at the time. It's easy enough to sort this out at the time that I'm going to play. But since that's not the case now, I'll just rebag it. I should send a yellow piece flying just to show that someone can take a trip and still end up just fine. as well. Hmm. The board is roughly flat. The problem is my little folding table here has a slight rise in the middle. So if I put it not on the middle, it lies flat. The board has not been warped. Everything is fine. And I'll put it here and I go back on the shelf. Another choice I make that might make it easier for me to use this type of cleanup system is that I store all my games horizontally. I don't have to worry about things standing and possibly bending over time or getting crunched down on the bottom. Everything can lie flat. There's much less pressure on everything. Things stay good for many, many years that way. Let's look at a few other games just for fun. I recorded an overview video for Iberian Gage in the middle of 2021, and I haven't touched the game since, which is often the case, just because new games keep coming in and I need to do videos, so even games I like get put aside. For some reason, I bag these components. I'm not sure why. Possibly because I figure they're going to sit on top of the box because it's a six volt board, it's a little heavier board, it's a little harder to spread all these things out. They're not all the same thickness. There's a giant train in here. So possibly I figure it's not like a sea of components like in Monasterium. It's a little more discreet in terms of the unit. So I wanna put them on top. And if I put them on top, apparently I bag them in this case. Uh, what I did not bag was the money. Here's the bonus choo-choo for pre-order people. Everyone's going to be a player color. So I, I would say choose a color and then I would dump these on the, t on the table and say, take the bit, take the cubes of your color. And anything not chosen, well, that's not used. For the money, this is often how I sort the money. I'm just gonna say, yeah, put this on the side and we're gonna lay out the board. And here we 
we go. Hey, everyone, take $40, and we'll just hand out. There's 30, 35, and we'll pick out some ones. And there you go. And I'm not going to worry about sorting the money because we'll sort it as we need it when we're paying dividends over time and as people pay and they're putting money in the treasury and actually the treasuries are going to be in this side so I'll actually have the money over on this side there we go ah yeah now it's all set up hey and the rules suggest that you sort all the trains by color on the side I'm not going to do that and I would set up there you go there's the pile of trains take your cubes out you can find those cubes relatively quickly. I'm gonna put this over here, give this to a random start player, and then the trains can just sit here in a pile because it doesn't matter. I don't need to sort them. Over time, you possibly are going to run out of trains. I've had that happen, I think, in one out of six or seven games. It's just not an issue that comes up that often. So I'm just gonna take this approach. Money's over here, trains are over here. Don't worry about it. Make changes needed. Sometimes other people feel the need to organize the money. You can see all the 20s are grouped together here. If someone else wants to do that, they are free to do so in their time between turns. That's up to them. But that's not something that I'm going to do. Okay. So how quickly can I put this away? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have the, the train out separately. Right. But if you don't worry about sorting the trains beforehand, don't worry about sorting them afterward, you sweep everything off the board. the money is usually a bit more organized at the end of the game just because people are counting all their stuff there you go oh, the only thing not organized here is the cloth on my table let's look at another game that I did a video overview for Castello Mathoni I've not opened this since I did a video uh, unused bag, You've got the board on top. In theory, you could bag each player's color, right? But again, why bother? The cards stand up here, there's coins in here for people handling things. You don't have to sort anything. It all goes in here. Uh, I have not played a five player game yet, so this color has not yet been used. That is still untouched. I still want to play a three and five player game, but it's not been easy to get that many people at the table for reasons that might be clear. Let's see what else I've got. Another game that I did a video for. Juicy Brutes. Boards on top. Boards on top. Everything else just thrown in the bottom. The bag of the components because you need the bag of the ships you're going to be pulling components from the bag so you just sweep them all in there oh that's right there are two types of ships they should be in separate bags but after i recorded the video i sorted them all into one because it was faster again i have not played juicy fruits since i did a video of it so that was time saved and someone else can sort out the game later. Okay, Nova Luna. Hey, components here. These are bags, possibly because these components, these discs, are extremely small and easy to use. Uh, lose, sorry. Also, I borrowed this copy from the BGG library, so the, the library wants stuff bagged. So here it is, my concession to that. Although, don't need to bag the tiles because it does not matter. They will not be damaged however you, you do things with them. Okay. Let's see, my, one of my favorite games, that's life. Uh, tiles fit here. I'm kind of surprised I kept the insert for this so far. 
These tiles in theory go here, but they don't have to. The guards have this beautiful little space where you can organize them. All right, there's little plastic to hold them specifically. That nice. Hmm, that would keep them there, but honestly, again, why bother? Just fit them in there. I just go here. Everything fits in the box. The box closes. This has some awesome box fart. Highly recommended. Not just for that, but also it's a fantastic game. Let's see. Aristocracy, a game that I keep meaning to review, and now TC Menstrual Games is going out of business. So, or at least not publishing games anymore. So it seems kind of superfluous to do a review at this point. You've got all these components. Hmm, as you see, I have not bagged the white and black pieces. Uh, yellow and pink, I'm not sure why they're in the same bag. I have played a four player game. But none of the other tiles are in a bag because it doesn't matter. We're going to put it all on the table. You have to turn all of these face down and place them at random on the squares of the board. Honestly, this seems like it should be a digital game, surely, uh, simply because of the lengthy setup time. You're putting out a hundred something little tiles face down, but you're doing it with other players. Okay, it's not that long. It'll work out okay. You're going to put these tiles in here that people are going to score. Uh, there's a three and two of each color. Oh, sorry, three and three of each color. It's been a while. Got other the twos out here and you're going to set everything up why bag it if you're just going to have to turn them all face down anyway just instead don't bother sorting it just sweep it in the box Uh, leave the bags there when <laughs> you pass it on and sell it to someone else. One thing I mentioned, it's kind of neat. This game came with extra components in case you do lose some, possibly by sweeping them recklessly off the table into the box. Thank you, TMG, for people like me. Let's see, here's a game I literally have not played since 2006, and I did not open this beforehand to see what I did with it. Did I bag back then? I don't know. All the player pieces are together. The cards are in their slot. Nothing is sorted. Uh, wow. I, again, I haven't played since 2006. So I do not remember the details of Settlers of the Stone Age. I've got some things in bags. I guess that was a concession to ideas at the time. But all the player pieces are together. Doesn't matter. These, oh, hey, these actually go there in theory to keep all the pieces in. But the pieces are already kept in. I got one other game. One game that I do sort. One game that is organized. A game with almost no pieces. But a game I sort. So. Why do I sort Quirkle? Well, number one, I play it more frequently than almost anything else because my wife loves it. Number two, this is one game I know I'm going to get to the table again. True, I might die before it gets here, but you can set up like so. Ah, I'm flipping over tiles if I mix them. But, and now we're going to be set to go after a bit of shuffling around the table and people take their tiles. You can see things are marked anyway just because they're wooden bits, but eh, we generally don't pay attention to that. And in this case, I will take time to put it back in the box, right side up. But of course, that's how the game ends. All the pieces are right side up at the end of the game, except for those few that are in people's hands. So at the end of the game, often you can grab blocks four at a time and just plop them in there. 
and build up that level. So it makes sense because the game ends that way, it goes in the box that way, and then the setup, flip it all over, and you're good to go. Admittedly, these examples might not convince you to put games away in this efficient manner. Some might say haphazard, I would argue efficient. But I wanted to give more examples of how I put games away and explain why I do so in this manner. Namely, I don't think it saves you any amount of time over bagging everything at the end of play and then handing out the bags at the beginning in order to have people bring everything out of the bags at that point. It's just fiddling around, lots of time spent sorting out things, when instead, whoop, you can clean up almost any game in a minute and be on to something else. Maybe that game will never hit the table again. What's the point of sorting out all the bits? Because they are not going to be damaged, as I have tried to demonstrate by moving things around. Well, what are you doing with these games that they need to be bagged up? Everything needs to be segregated inside the box. Are they really going to be damaged from that little bit of handling that you were going to do? Maybe if you were going to ship them cross country in a suitcase where they will be handled in a manner that you know suitcases are handled in, maybe at that point, possibly then, I could see the argument for bagging things. But even at that point, I will not do so. Here we see. Over here, I will bring out the five hearts. Uh, where is it? Uh, I have noticed that my game is splitting a bit here, it's already split a bit here. You know what? It still works, it's just a box holding things together. If it splits completely, I'll tape it up. It's okay, it will still work in this condition, and it's not going to be damaged. from shipping it around because this did go in my suitcase to BGG Con and back. And it looks fine. Everything works fine. Nothing is damaged. Nothing has been lost. It's all there, ready to play. And your games could be in the same type of condition. You could spend more time playing and less time sorting. In the future, I plan to do a set up and put away challenge where I'm gonna get a friend where we own the same game. We're gonna take the game off the shelf however we have it, see how quickly we can set it up, see how quickly we put it away. We add those times together. We're gonna to see who's more efficient. I am confident that my method is more efficient and faster overall with cleanup and setup combined. You may disagree, but I'm, I, I wanna see that happen. I wanna see us do that. We just have to find the right game that we can do because our tastes have uh, only a bit of Venn diagram, and, or at least in terms of our, our collection. Uh, future videos that I have planned, maybe I can convince you with these topics too. Number one, why you should never sleeve cards in a game, except in a tiny, tiny number of cases. Number two, how to save space by combining games within boxes. Now, everyone has seen that, right? Where you put expansions inside a box. That makes sense lots of time because you can save space. Even more so if you put a related game inside the box. Imhotep the Duel fits inside Imhotep while the expansion components are down here in a insert that I created by cutting apart the expansion box. Everything fits very nicely and it's all set to go. Either game, with base game or expansion. Two player, doesn't matter. It's all set in one box ready to go. Oh my God, things were bagged in there. Perhaps I've broken a cardinal rule. I should take it all out at this point. another time.